Let's dive into this mind-boggling thing called consciousness. You know that voice inside your head, that feeling of what it's like to be you? Yeah, that's consciousness. And it's like our personal backstage pass to our own thoughts and experiences. And for centuries, smart people have been scratching their head trying to figure out what this consciousness thing's all about. Now in some ways, some scientists have figured out little bits and pieces of the story. Like how certain parts of the brain will light up or just have more blood flow when we think about certain things. But the big question of like, how does this squishy thing between our ears come up with this whole consciousness thing, that is still a giant mystery. So in this video, we're gonna explore that intersection between consciousness and artificial intelligence. So I wanna start with this clip of Sam Altman, but first, I have a question for you about Copernicus. Yeah, Nicholas Copernicus. So imagine that you're way back in the 1500s, you live in Poland and you've just retired. And this Copernicus guy starts saying, the sun doesn't revolve around the earth, right? Newspapers pick up on it, such a juicy topic, you know? The threats come, don't mess with my way of life, all that stuff as we realize that we're not as important as we thought we were. Well, I bet the first time he said it in public, it got a laugh similar to this. And that's that's definitely a change to my worldview. Well, that laugh is a response to this comment. I grew up implicitly thinking that intelligence was this like really special human thing and kind of somewhat magical. And I now think that it's sort of a fundamental property of matter. Which is actually really amazing when you just stop and think about that for a second. Like in the same way that gravity and physical laws are everywhere in the universe, any complex system that has certain elements might be just intelligent, maybe even conscious. It's like finding out the sun doesn't revolve around Earth. It's just humbling. Before we get into the meat and potatoes of this video, I just wanna have a quick conversation about the difference between intelligence and consciousness. Have you ever wondered about the way you can think, feel, and experience emotions, the thing that sets you apart from the gadgets that you use every day? Humans have intelligence and consciousness. Whereas machines usually follow programs, but recently with artificial intelligence are showing signs of intelligence, probably not consciousness yet. Because intelligence is the ability to learn, solve problems, and reason. Where consciousness is different, it's more the essence of your existence. You know, it's something like having a world model, but also placing yourself inside that world model and having the emotion and experience of being an individual in that. Like imagine how your dog has that cheerful greeting when you get home or the intelligent gaze of a dolphin. But consciousness might be a sliding scale. An AI could be on there somewhere or it might not be going down that route at all. Now ChatGPT is intelligent. It scored a 155 in fact on an IQ test. But but what it's doing is predicting each token, and I don't know if that's gonna spring into a world model or if it feels conscious or not, that's unclear. But that's what this whole video is all about, and I guarantee by the end you will be less clear, actually. You'll know more, but you'll probably even be more confused. No conversation in consciousness would be worth anything if you don't bring up David Chalmers' hard problem of consciousness. So David is a cognitive science and a philosopher, and he came up with this idea that there's an easy and hard problem to consciousness. And it makes a great framework because you can separate what's called the easy consciousness problem into the fundamental aspects of it. Doesn't mean they're easy to solve, but it means that actual science can be applied. But the subject of consciousness also has the hard problem. And it's hard because to answer it, we can't use science, which is like our go-to tool to explain the world. Because the story of consciousness involves us talking about something called qualia. And the whole concept of qualia is subjective. It's a first person experience of the world. It's a mental state that represents the what it's like component of life. For instance, imagine colors, like the color blue, the color red, the color yellow, like you can describe the wavelength, but the color is, is up here somewhere. You know, in our internal thoughts, the taste of sour, the feeling of pain, these are interesting descriptors that come along with consciousness, not intelligence. Now the hard problem asks, how does a physical brain give a subjective experience up here? Like, what is that? There's a good chance that science will never have the answer to why you're conscious. Here's six ways that philosophers are stepping up to try to answer the hard problem of consciousness. First off is dualism, and that suggests that the mind and the brain are made of two different substances altogether. Second is physicalism, which is the opposite. So once we have a full physical understanding of the brain, we'll understand consciousness alongside it. Third is panpsychism, which proposes that consciousness is already all around us. It's in all of the physical stuff in this universe. Just as humans, we understand it in a more complex and sophisticated way. Number four is a limitivism. This suggests that what we think of as consciousness doesn't exist and it's an illusion in the first place. Number five is monism, which 
which proposes there's an underlying substance that we haven't discovered yet, and from that substance, we get the material world all around us and the conscious world. And number six is called Mysterianism, which suggests that consciousness is unsolvable by a human mind. Like we're a system inside of a system and could never see it. So next, let's talk about this book. It's called The Mathematical Universe, and this author, Max Tegmark, has an interesting concept when it comes to consciousness. He suggests that we do look at consciousness as a physical phenomenon, and he said it could be described by the feeling of information being processed in a complex way, which means that like everything that we feel and the emotions we have, like they're just the complexity of the brain and the electricity flowing through it, like the information being processed, which suggests that your rich inner life is just woven from the complexity of all those interactions. Tegmark's hypothesis is a blend of neuroscience and physics. He suggests that there's no mystical aspect to consciousness, it's just grounded in physics. And this can be both empowering and awe-inspiring, at the same time kind of being a bit of a letdown, honestly. But I guess I'm connected to the universe through complexity, which in itself feels sort of spiritual. That's Max Tegmark for you. It's a good book, it's a good book. Okay, just for fun, do you guys wanna talk about quantum consciousness? So there's no established scientific connection between quantum mechanics and consciousness. There just isn't. But here's a few of the more speculative ones just because it's fun to talk about. Orchestrated, objective, reduction, hypothesis. First proposed by Roger Penrose, big name, and it suggests these little things called microtubules in the brain actually function like quantum processors. Dude, not your cup of tea? Don't worry. There's also wave function collapse theories. It suggests that our act of conscious observation collapses the wave function and that gives us the world around us. What about quantum brain dynamics? If you're into that one, that suggests that the electromagnetic field of the brain has quantum mechanical properties and that consciousness comes from that interacting with the quantum world around us. Okay, okay, how about information theory combined with quantum entanglement? Maybe consciousness comes from quantum information processing with entangled particles that could actually do faster than light communication? Smash that subscribe button. So author Paul Pollagy wrote a piece called Human Consciousness is a Subtle Beast, in which he writes about whether robots and computers can ever be conscious like humans. For example, a robot with a camera might recognize stuff, but it doesn't really see like a human does. It's more like checking off things that it recognizes. He references a special kind of test where you ask a robot about its subjective experience to see what it says back. The goal is to find out if it has its own rich inner world or it's just kind of like answering questions and doesn't sense itself in that way. And he's skeptical that robots will pass this this kind of a test anytime soon. In fact, a lot of people think that it might just be smoke and mirrors when you talk about robot consciousness for a long while, maybe forever. Others think that consciousness is something special that just pops up at a certain time under certain conditions. And there's even a third group that thinks everything in reality is just a simulation and we're all like video game characters. But let's save simulation theory for another video. Okay, anybody who's gonna talk about AI and consciousness has to bring up the famous Chinese room thought experiment. Imagine an empty room and there's nobody in there except one woman sitting at a desk and she only speaks English. Then from outside the room, a slot is opened and a man puts a letter in that's written in Chinese. So there's only one thing on the desk and it's a rule book on how to go from Chinese characters to other Chinese characters by following rules. She takes the letter, she follows the rules, she ends up with another letter that's also written in Chinese and passes it back through the slot. But now imagine that the man on the outside thinks that she can speak Chinese because he sees a reply to his letter. Well, it's an argument, well, that's a metaphor, an argument against machine intelligence, meaning that what it seems like they're doing is intelligent, but what it really is is just kind of following these rules. So if you're fascinated with the Chinese room thought experiment, I came across a wonderful long form podcast discussing the issue. And I recommend jumping to around the 16 minute point because there's an employee from Google's DeepMind who does an amazing job deconstructing it and thinking about it from different angles. And he has all sorts of counter arguments, like how you have to think about the system as a whole before you can get to something closer to consciousness and at least intelligence. One part that really stuck with me is that if you really think about what a book is, it's nothing but ink and paper sitting on a shelf. The only thing that can be considered a story is actually an active process that has to happen in the moment when something like a human brain with intelligence is actually processing the information. Well, think about that for a minute because like movies don't exist unless anybody's watching them. Without heartbeats and neuronal signaling and blood flow going through a body, there's, there's no story there. Anyways, it's incredible. Check out the podcast. I got a link below. It's called Machine Learning Street. Talk. Dude, one of the reasons I love making videos on YouTube is because I was able to spend all day learning about consciousness. I had a blast. But I have to say, one idea that popped in my head just kept like running around and I felt like I needed to include it. I flipped the idea of consciousness. I assume that there's a future with a highly intelligent robot that's actually more conscious than we are. You know, might be impossible, but if it isn't, imagine that scenario because then the robot would look at us and be like, you don't get it all the way I do. You know, like you don't understand 
the physical world and the internal thoughts and the complexity of my existence. Like yours is so much more simple. Like the way we might think about like a dog or a mouse. Worse than that, what if like a robot or an alien was to look at us and be like, oh, these humans, like they're just about mating and food and shelter. Like I've got them figured out. That's not consciousness. I'd be like, no, it's consciousness. I think it is. Cause I can tell for myself, I'm in my own brain. I know. I don't want that robot to be like, just human batteries, get in the matrix. Smash that subscribe button. <laughs>